Here's today's First Word Daily Devotion. On this 27th day of February, we get to turn our attention to Leviticus chapter 15 and 16. Here we are in Leviticus 15 and 16. We're 16 chapters into Leviticus. We're almost finished with the book. We're halfway there. And so many have likened Bible study to maybe an archaeological dig, or maybe if that doesn't uh, excite you, uh, some have likened, I think this was Chuck Swindoll, who said that Bible study is like spelunking, you know, that uh, cave exploration, where we have to make it all the way into the cave, we have to make it to the bottom uh, to find the real treasure and the real gold. And so today, we get an opportunity to see a bright spot in our study of Leviticus, especially as it comes to Leviticus chapter 16, probably the most significant chapter in the book of Leviticus, especially as it relates to our salvation in Jesus Christ. But we'll get there. But before that, look at Leviticus 15. Before you quickly glance over all of those details and think, you know, what does that have to do with me? Remember as you read all of those details as we read chapter 15, God created us and he created all of us. And all of us, that is every part of us, is to be holy to him or Every part of us is to be consecrated to Him. And so those are the details that we keep reading, these minute details about bodily functions or how this relates in this particular scenario. God desires every part of us for Himself. Now let's turn over here to Leviticus chapter 16. And Leviticus chapter 16, of course, puts us in the context back to Leviticus chapter 10 when the sons of Aaron uh, offered strange fire before the Lord and they were, of course, struck dead. And so that sets our tone then for what's coming next. The tone set for coming next is the holiness of the Lord, how he is holy, but he is approachable. But as we approach him, we must approach him in the right way. So let's go back again for just a minute. Remember Leviticus chapter 13? We identified who it is that's sent out of the camp. Leviticus chapter 14 Uh, tells us the way that you bring individuals back in to the camp is through atonement. And so atonement has been the constant theme of Leviticus. And we see atonement expressed uh, or highlighted rather in Leviticus chapter 16 as we look at Yom Kippur or the day of atonement. And so notice what we have here. We have two male goats, one uh, for a sin offering and one for a burnt offering. Now, verse 6, Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering for himself, make atonement for himself and his house. So in other words, he has to get himself ready. He has to be a clean vessel to offer this for it to be effective for himself as well as for the sins of the people or the uh, sins of the nation. Then he shall take the two goats and set them before the Lord at the entrance of the tent of meeting. So there are two goats. Don't miss this. One Uh, Aaron shall cast lots over the two goats, one lot for the lot for the Lord, one lot for the Lord, and the other lot for Azazel. See that? That's a Hebrew word there. And we're not really certain what the translation means. Go down to the bottom. You have a ESV footnote. It says the meaning of Azazel is uncertain, possibly the name of a place or a demon, traditionally a scapegoat. In other words, this is the goat of going away. And I take it to mean it's a scapegoat or the goat of going away. The reason is because the Hebrew word for goat is ez, and the Hebrew word for going away is uh, azel. So you put those two together, azazel, and you get uh, the goat of going away. But notice this, one of those goats, if we read the narrative, one of those goats is slaughtered, and the other goat, the other goat is um, his... uh, Aaron puts his hands on his head and the head of the goat and confesses the sins of the people and the goat is sent away, the goat of going away. So there's two goats. The first goat is killed and the second goat is prayed over and sent away. So here we have the beautiful picture of the cross of Jesus Christ. Uh, There is a once for all sacrifice that the cross of Christ has accomplished for us as well as there is a perpetual um, ramifications or continuing of that sacrifice in our life. The Bible says in Hebrews that he is our high priest who ever stands to make intercessions for us. 
And of course, not only is he the lamb that was slain, he's also the lamb that was slain. He is the lamb that now lives. And so as long as he lives, he or our salvation is secure because we live forever in him. Turn over again to uh, our New Testament reading as we close today. New Testament reading, Mark chapter 6, these 29 verses here talk about the first message of the apostles in verse 12. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. The first message of the apostles is a message of repentance. Why is that? Well, we learn a little bit of why because of Leviticus. Remember, God never changes. And the reason that they their first message is repent is because God is holy. And John the Baptist, the events that unfold there that detail how John the Baptist lost his life is proof positive that the message of the apostles is valid. That is that people need to repent. And the message of the apostles is still valid in our day. People need to repent. God is holy. There is forgiveness available as we learn in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 9 and 10. Look at this language. With his mouth, the godless man would destroy his neighbor, but by knowledge, the righteous are delivered. Thankfully, we have a high priest who is not godless. He is, indeed is God himself, and he has a mouth that makes intercessions for us. He prays for us, and we are praying for the world that they may repent and know him forever.